Greetings from the top of Bangkok. Today I'm going to go down there to Benchikiti Park and I'm going to give you a complete guide to dating in Thailand. Let's go! So since I've been living in Bangkok for almost two years now, I have dated a lot of different women, some that are really great and some that were not so great at all. So today I'm gonna talk about my experience, give you some strategies and tips, and actually I'm gonna try to give you a complete guide to dating in Thailand. I'm gonna try to go over some tasty details, so stay till the end. So when I moved to Bangkok almost two years ago, I was looking to establish longer term relationships with women and do real dating. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about real dating and establishing relationships with women and not about hooking up in one night stands and just smashing and all of that. Even though I have had those kinds of experiences through using these methods, this video is going to be about real dating and long-term relationship seeking. All my experience has been in Bangkok. I haven't really, I haven't dated in any other cities in Thailand. All of these principles should apply in other areas of Thailand. However, things are gonna be different in other cities and areas, of course. I think Bangkok is your best bet for highest quality of women, like if you're looking for an educated, smart girl who speaks good English, I think Bangkok's the best bet for that. Furthermore, I have dated lots of other types of women that are not Thai in Bangkok. So I've dated women from the Philippines, Indonesia, Middle East, Africa, Malaysia, Japan. So. If your interests extend beyond just Thai women, then Bangkok is also the best, even though uh, I'm sure there might be advantages in other cities and towns, but yeah, all my experience has been in Bangkok. Okay, first I have to mention some initial points here. It should go without saying, but I'm gonna say them anyways. If you're looking to attract a good quality woman, then you need to make yourself someone that is worthy of that type of partner, right? So you can't just assume that since Thailand is one of the best places and easiest places to date in the world, that you can just let yourself go and be a slob and uh, still attract a good woman. You're gonna have to be a quality guy if you want a quality chick. So I suggest that you exercise and work out, take care of yourself, wear nice clothes, uh, groom yourself well, don't drink too much, you know, and uh, be somewhat sophisticated, right? The better you present yourself, the higher quality woman you're gonna attract. Okay, so the primary method that I'm going to talk about here for meeting women in Thailand is to use dating apps. I have met some women just when I'm out and about and gotten their contact and gone on dates with them. But I think the dating apps is the easiest and best way to go for several reasons. Number one, you don't have to go out to use them and meet people and message. You can do it anywhere, anytime. And number two, you know that you're there for the same reasons and the same intentions that, well, usually they're on the apps to date as well. The apps that I'm gonna recommend you use are Tinder and Bumble. I've also had some success with another app called Coffee Meets Bagel, but just save that for later and focus on Tinder and Bumble for now. There's another popular app here in Thailand called Thai Friendly, and I do not recommend that. I tried using it for a few months and seems to be mostly freelancers. All right, setup part one. You're gonna wanna make sure you have really good pictures of yourself. If you don't have good pictures of, well, first of all, you should have a few of your friends check out your pictures that you're wanting to use because you might think that they're good when they're actually not. <laughs> if you're really about it, then you could hire a professional photographer or you could just get one of your friends to grab an iPhone, go out, get a picture of you in some formal wear, dressing really nice, and then get a picture of you 
doing a sport or something active maybe. I already had lots of pictures of myself from my travels and also from being a musician. I had a bunch of pictures of me on stage performing. But yeah, make sure you have great pictures because if not, then it's a non-starter. All right, step two of the setup. At this point, I will assume that you are actually physically located in Thailand. And once you got some dapper and dope looking photos of yourself, download the Tinder and Bumble apps and the apps will walk you through the process of setting up your profile. So when you write the text that goes into your profile description, I suggest that you write very little in there. You gotta put something, of course. Women love mystery, so if you reveal too much information uh, beforehand, then it just kills the game from the outset. And this is a game, by the way. <sighs> all right, I usually fill out about half of all of the like demographic information, all the questions that they ask you. Uh, there are a few necessary ones, and then I do about half of the optional ones. You can pay for Tinder, which I do recommend because that saves so much time. You can see who swipes right on you, which means they want to match. So then you can just match with the people that want to match with you. Saves so much time. So Tinder is worth paying for. Bumble is not worth paying for in my opinion. I have found higher quality women on Bumble to be honest, but I have dated some good girls off of Tinder. You're also gonna want to verify your profile on both of the apps, which is just, you have to let the app take a picture of you making a certain pose and then they review it and verify that you're a real person. This is gonna help your chances of getting more matches on the app, so do that too. And now let's move on to the next step. All right. You're gonna be swiping on the apps and matching with girls. My first message to the girl on the app is usually something very basic, the standard greeting of, hey, I'm William, nice to meet you, or nice to match with you. I know a lot of girls expect guys to entertain them straight from the start and come up with all kinds of comic witticisms right from the first message, but I'm not gonna provide you free entertainment before we've even met. So I stick to the basic greetings, I expect the girl to help with the conversation. So this is a filter right from the start. You're going to have to be okay with dropping girls all throughout this process. If you want to find a good one, I have all kinds of filters to weed out the bad ones and this is one of them. I want the girl to help with the conversation right from the start. So I just say, hey, what's up? I'm William. Nice to meet you. If she responds, then I come with uh, Tell me about yourself, what do you like to do? And then you just roll with the conversation from there. Here's another filter. Here's another filter, the infamous what do you do question. When a girl asks me what do you do either on the app or on the first date, I either say that I'm a tuk-tuk driver or a North Korean spy. This is another filter, filters out the gold diggers and chicks that are way too serious for me. I want to check who's lighthearted and willing to take a joke and not pressing too hard for all the serious information. Another thing that I'll mention here is I've heard from so many girls how guys will text them perverted sexual stuff right from the beginning and this is so stupid and just hurts your cause, never works, so just don't do it. They've heard it a million times, hmm. yeah, just don't do it. Alright, now is the time to make the date. I usually go back and forth with five or six messages before I make the date, and then this is a good time to ask for her line ID, either make the date and ask for the line ID, or ask for the line ID and make the date online. If you're not aware, Line is a messaging app that's commonly used by most people in Asia. I've met and gone on dates with women that I met just out and about, and I feel like the Line app helps with that also, because you can just scan a QR code to uh, get each other's Line 
ID and message through there. It's much easier than exchanging phone numbers. But moving to the Line app at this stage is good for several reasons, I think. It makes it more personal, makes it more likely that they'll accept the date and less likely that they'll bail. So yeah, moving to Line is a good idea. So if I have multiple nights open in a week or a weekend, I'll usually say something like, would you like to go on a date this week or would you like to go on a date this weekend? If my schedule's really tight and I only have one evening open, I will just ask for that night. So if I only have one night open, I'll say, would you like to go on a date on Thursday night or something like that. Make sure you say the word date. Do not be ambiguous. Do not ask the girl to hang out. Do not ask the girl to go out with you and your friends. Don't ask for group dates. None of that crap. You'd be amazed at how many women have told me that I was the first guy to ask her on a date in the proper way like this. So many guys don't even know that women prefer this direct approach. So just be direct, ask for a date on a particular day and time. Don't be ambiguous, be specific. For the first date, I always ask to go to a mid-level or casual restaurant in my area. I think this is the best bet for a first date. All right, so when you ask for the date, things can go a few different ways, of course. Hopefully she just says yes and accepts the date. Anything other than yes usually means no. If she says, why do you want to go there? Or something like that, I usually just cut it and forget about it because this is either a sign that she's a gold digger and wants to have steak and lobster and champagne, or she's structured and inflexible, or she's just unwilling to come to my area, which is an unfortunate reality of dating in Bangkok. Either way, it's a non-starter for me, so I just cut it if there's any excuses or pushback or whiny questions or anything like that. All right, so I usually book the date about four to seven days out, and then I do a confirmation the day before the date. At first, I wasn't doing this, but I got stood up for a few dates where the girl just didn't show up. So now I do a confirmation the day before and say something like, hey, see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. at restaurant ABC looking forward to it, whatever. Uh, I'd rather give her the chance to cancel and save my time rather than wasting the time getting all dressed up and go out for her to not show up. So yeah, I do a confirmation the day before the date and then it's time for the date. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. I got more coming like this and lots of other tasty stuff in the works. Now I'm going to go to the Queen City Kit National Convention Center for some lunch. Grab some sushi up in here. Gonna get some Zen sushi. I love the rainbow tempura maki and the tori namban tartar sauce from this place. It's so good. This is nice. Lately, I've been regularly walking through Ben Chiquiti Park and then coming over here to the convention center to eat. They have quite a few restaurants here, but they're mid-tier 
and above and they're not budget so it's kind of hurting the budget but they're tasty this is a completely unrelated side note but a lot of restaurants especially in the u.s now like to use these paper straws which i dislike very much they disintegrate and you can taste the cardboard it's just not good here in thailand i've seen a lot completely biodegradable straws that are not paper so they look and feel like plastic but they're biodegradable straws everywhere should be using these and completely eliminate paper straws don't like paper straws Whoa, that was great now let's continue our discussion i believe we were at the first date now you're on your first date, it's time for your performance. Hopefully you have some kind of personality. If not, you'll need to fake it. <laughs> the first date and the first few dates are more about what not to do than what to do. Definitely don't talk about heavy subjects. Stay off of sex, race, politics, and religion. Be positive. Talk about the good points in your life. Don't be negative at all. Be confident. Don't give away too much information because women love challenge and mystery. Uh, I somewhat adapt my mannerisms and my approach depending on her personality, but you're gonna have to improvise and wing it yourself. A woman wants to admire you and think that you're a badass, so if you're not, then fake it. I mean, don't lie, but yeah. Only display the good points of your personality. All right, and then subsequent dates, you're just gonna wanna rinse and repeat. Hopefully your first date went well, and then you just roll with it. Wait another four to seven days, and then book the second date, and keep it going for the second date. I usually like to do something playful and fun and active, like bowling or putt-putt golf or something like that. That's a good second date, in my opinion. You're gonna encounter many different types of girls looking for different things and approaching the potential relationship in different ways. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the different types of girls, some warning signs, some red flags, and things to watch out for. First one is women who look nothing like their picture. You show up to the date and they look much worse than their photograph. This has happened to me a couple times. I just grinned and bared it and went through with the date and then cut it after that, but yeah, this might happen to you if you go on a lot of dates. Also, you might encounter a lady boy who didn't tell you that they were a lady boy before you met for the date. Usually they'll tell you, but sometimes they don't. The next one is women who assume that you're going steady with them or that you're not dating other people when you haven't even discussed it. I've had this happen too many times and I don't know where they get this from, but a lot of these girls out here, after you have just a few dates with them, they'll just assume that you're not seeing other people even though you've never discussed it with them. Man, I don't know why or where this comes from, but it's not cool. I don't think this is how the rules of dating should work. Um, I've had this happen several times where a girl blows up on me after I've only had four or five dates with her and we've never talked about it when she finds out that I've been dating other people. <sighs> it's annoying, but what can you do? The next thing that you're definitely going to encounter is freelancers. Um, most of them will tell you that they're freelancers on the app while you're texting before you even meet. Some of them will not, and some of them will hint at it and not be direct. So if you've asked for a date and they say something like, well, what are we gonna do after we have dinner? Or something like that, or let's, let's party after or something, then you're gonna need to probe further and find out that they are indeed a freelancer. I've had a couple of instances where they said absolutely nothing, and then when we get back to my place after the date, they ask for money, and at that point, I kick them out of my condo. Because <laughs> I don't play like that, it's bad form. You gotta let people know ahead of time that that's what's up. 
The next thing that you will probably encounter is regular girls who ask for money. Had this happen a couple times also where I go on three, four, five, six dates with a chick and then she asks me for money for one reason or another. Uh, this is a cliche with the sick buffalo thing or whatever where she's asking you money for somebody in her family who's sick or something like that. At that point, I, I, I never give them money and I just cut them off at that point because I'm not going to do that. I will pay for dates and things like that, but I'm not going to straight up give you cash. Uh, I know this happens a lot, particularly with older gentlemen who come over here and you want to have a real young Thai chick. If that's what you got to do, then I'm not hating. Go for it. I uh, totally understand that. But yeah, I don't do that. So that's going to be something that you're probably going to encounter. Another thing that I've encountered quite a bit, unfortunately, and this is definitely not a Thai thing exclusively at all, this applies everywhere, but I have met and dated several girls who had a lot of mental and emotional baggage and scars from traumatic events in their past, and these things will affect the way that they approach the relationship. A lot of these types of girls don't believe that they deserve to be loved, and it's really sad, but I usually don't continue dating that type of girl just for my own sanity and I gotta try to find the best potential long-term partner that I can. So this is an unfortunate reality that you'll probably encounter also. All right, another warning here. There are message boards and Facebook groups where thousands of Thai girls will post about the guys that they go on dates with here. So do not do anything shady or sketchy. Do not lie or be deceptive to any girl you go on a date with. You gotta be on your best behavior because if you're not, then everyone will find out. So <laughs> you can't get away with anything here. That's the type of mentality you gotta have. Just. Be on your best behavior. All right, hope you enjoyed this guide to dating in Thailand. Subscribe to the channel. I got lots more videos like this revolving around Thailand and the rest of Asia coming up. So subscribe to the channel, leave a comment letting me know you've subscribed. If I forgot anything, leave a comment and ask me the question. See you soon, peace.